Europe is facing with the prospect of that faced with the prospect of a radiation disaster on Thursday when the Zaporizhia nuclear plant in Ukraine was disconnected from its power grid. But the disaster was averted because the backup electricity kicked in and order was restored. Diesel generators were immediately activated to provide energy to the station itself, to support it after the shutdown. The world must understand what a threat this is. If the diesel generators had not turned on, if the automation and our station staff had not reached after the blackout, then we would have already been forced to overcome the consequences of the radiation accident. Russia has put Ukraine and all Europeans in a situation one step away from a radiation disaster. So the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has blamed Russian shelling for the situation. Fars in the ash pits of a nearby coal station caused by the shelling led to the reactor complex being disconnected from the power grid. Now on your screens are the satellite images that were taken on Wednesday which showed the fires near the nuclear complex. Now, Zelensky has also said that the United Nations nuclear watchdog, the IAEA, should be given access to the site within days before the situation gets to the point of no return. The Ukraine state nuclear company, Energo Atom, has said that it had been the first complete disconnection from the power grid in the plant's history. Now, electricity is used for cooling and safety systems. Russia, which invaded Ukraine in February, captured the plant in the month of March. It has controlled it since although Ukrainian technicians still operate and work at the plant. Now, Russia and Ukraine have accused each other of shelling the site, fueling fears of a possible nuclear disaster. The officials of the Russian-occupied town of Enerhoda have said that the towns in the area lost power for several hours on Thursday due to the disconnection of the power plant. Now, the U.S. President Joe Biden, in a telephone call with Volodymyr Zelensky, has called for Russia to return the full control of the plant and to let the United Nations nuclear inspectors take over at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Look, a, a nuclear power plant, and I, I believe I said this yesterday, should never be an active war zone. And so we have said Russia should agree to de demilitarize the, the, the zone around the plant and agree to allow an international auto atomic energy agency visit as soon as possible to check on the safety and security of the systems this is something that that did come up in the conversation the situation comes amidst claims from ukraine that moscow could be trying to intentionally divert power from the occupied nuclear plant to reconnect it to its own power grid but the fighting in the area around the nuclear power station has been a source of some serious concern for several weeks now it also supplies nearly about 20% of Ukraine's electricity needs and its loss will pile new strain on the government. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what's exactly happening at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, we're being joined by Oleksiy Melnik, who is a co-director of the Foreign Relations and International Security Program at the Razumkov Center in Kiev. Mr. So thank you very much indeed for joining us here on this broadcast on Vyond. And let me begin by asking you this. Now, what's in fact happened at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant where it briefly for a period of time went off the power grid shows the serious danger that that, that could in fact happen, you know, of a calamity that could happen at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in case it goes off the power grid again. What is your assessment about the danger that lurks in, in terms of the shelling that is taking place at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant? Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And I think we are all are very lucky that we are able to say good morning today because as rightly was said by the Ukrainian president, the European continent and probably the whole world war was just one moment away from a uh, nuclear disaster. And mm -hmm. uh, what was described in your previous uh, report that uh, uh, one of the main reasons is the active fighting near the station and uh, fire in the forest, but also there are multiple risks. Even the, the presence of uh, the people with weapons who are not trained to be at this very, uh, very dangerous space is, uh, is uh, uh, a great risk. And also let me remind you that Ukrainian workers who still operate the Plant very skillfully, as we saw yesterday. Right. They are kept 
as hostages by the Russian forces since March. So there are many, many risks still, still, uh, I mean, very valid. No, Mr. Alexei Melnik, you know, this, this is a story that's, that's been reported a lot, at least in the last three to four weeks, ever since there have been reports that there's been shelling that's been taking place at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. You know, Ukraine says that it is the Russians who are resorting to shelling at a nuclear power, at this nuclear power plant. But the question that a lot of people want to know is, if the Russian soldiers are in control of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, then why would Russia want to shell a nuclear power plant that it presently controls? Well, in fact, uh, there is no shelling at the nuclear uh, power plant itself. There is shelling around. And I'm pretty sure that uh, most of these shellings are Russian provocations. Uh, also, Russians uh, use the, the territory of the nuclear power plant for shelling of the Ukrainian city across the river. And uh, I, I'm pretty confident that uh, for Ukrainian forces, for Ukrainian government, it's a suicide attack. And it's full understanding that if anything happens on these stations, that the whole territory of Ukraine will be devastated, especially the, the, re the regions of uh, the southern of Ukraine. That, that's why I, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, most of these shellings are Russian provocations. And also let me remind you that back in March, Russians also occupied the territory of uh, Chernobyl nuclear power plant, another uh, nuclear disaster which, which took place in 19. 86 during the Soviet times. And mm -hmm. the, the reason Russians took this place was to use it as a shelter because they were pretty sure that Ukrainian forces will not use artillery to right. attack them, you know, being aware of the danger. Now, the situation as it stands at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is, you know, the United Nations want this area in Zaporizhia to be completely demilitarized. Ukraine, of course, agrees to the fact that it wants this area to be demilitarized and to let the IA inspectors to in fact come and take a look at the Zaporizhia nuclear facility. But Russia has not agreed to that. With that being the case, how do you think things can proceed from here? Uh, first of all, let me say that nobody heard about the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant before uh, this year. And the, the core reason for, for the problem that we're facing now is the Russian occupation. And so this is the obvious decision, the obvious solution to withdraw Russian troops from the nuclear power plant and let Ukrainian workers to operate the, this plant without being under con continuous pressure. And uh, I think we have the pre unprecedented case of uh, nuclear terrorism performed mm -hmm. on the level of the uh, of the state. And so you, Russia, by holding this uh, nuclear power plant terrorizing Ukraine, trying to use it as the deterrence against any offensive operation from Ukrainian side, and also it uses it to terrorize uh, the the whole Europe and the whole world by you know, uh, trying to, to show that they, at any case they can, uh, they can make uh, this right. nuclear attack using just uh, a civilian power plant. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Oleksiy Melnik, for joining us and getting us all those updates from Kiev there. Thank you for having me. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.